Hi guys, so this is poem 17 from chapter 4. Um, the section is on node voltage with dependent voltage sources. So we have a circuit here with an independent current source of 25 amps going into a node that's parallel connected with 40 ohms and 160. And this is 10, 20, 8. And this is a dependent voltage source with the value 84I delta. And I delta is the current that goes through the 160 ohm resistor. So we're supposed to use the node voltage method to, um, what are we supposed to do? Hang on. We are supposed to use the node voltage method to find the total power developed in the circuit. And then we're supposed to check that our answer is correct by comparing power absorbed with power developed. And they should be equal. Okay, so let's get started. So we're supposed to use a node voltage, and which means we need to identify the nodes in the circuit and then do KCL at those nodes. So if the first thing I did was I just said, okay, I look for T's. So wherever there's T, there's going to be a node. Because it can, it, a node, an essential node is a node that connects two, three or more circuit elements. So this one I said was V1, this one I said was V2, and this one I said was V3. And then I said, well, and also we need a dependent um, equation which says V2 is equal to um, V2, excuse me, I delta is equal to V2 over 160. So then I started writing my equations. I said, okay, well, we know the voltage at V1. That's going to be, we've got 25 um, amps going into the node. Currents into the node is negative. So that's going to be negative 25 plus then V1 over 40. Then plus, and then, since I never really pay attention when I start writing my node equation, I was like, V1, V2, there's nothing but a jumper wire in between, so they must be the same node. So V1 is really, V2 is really V1. So then I change that and then continue writing my equations at this jumper, at the other end of the jumper. So, um, so, so then this is V1 over 160. Oh, and I want to change this to V2. And then the, V1 minus V2 over 10 is equal to um, 0. That's KCL. Every term that I have in here is a current term. So now I'm going to start grouping together my coefficients and letting my calculator do the hard work. So my coefficients for V1 are 1 over 40 plus 1 over 160 plus 1 over 10. My coefficient for V2 is um, negative 1 over 10, and constants go on the other side, and that is the first equation that I need. Now I'm going to write my nodal equation for at V2. So node voltage at V2 gives me V2 minus V1 over 10. That one there, now I need this one, plus V2 over 20, plus V2 minus 84I delta, that's over 8, and that's equal to 0. But, I delta is really V1 over 160, so this is really 80, V1 over 160. That's what I have. So in my numerator, I have V2 minus 84, 160th, V1, whatever that is. Um, all of that is over 8. So now I gather my coefficients in this one. So V1, this is equation 2, I have negative 110. And then I also have negative 84 over 160 over 8. And I'm going to let my calculator do the calculation for me. So minus 84. Divided by 160, divided by 8. And that is everything for V1. And then plus V2, 120th, 
20 plus 1 eighth. Oh, plus 1 10. Plus 1 10. That one there. 1 tenth, 1 twentieth, 1 eighth. That's equal to 0. And I'm going to start proofing my work because sometimes I do it right on paper and then I make a typo on the blackboard and then it messes people up. And, and that, I don't ever feel good about messing you guys up. So let me just double check to make sure. I have two equations and two unknowns. So 1 divided by 40 plus 1 divided by 160 plus 1 divided by 10. Negative 1 divided by 10, 25. Maybe 1 divided by 10 minus 84 divided by 160 divided that by 8. And then 1 divided by 20 plus 1 divided by 8 plus 1 divided by 10. Okay, so I did get everything on the board is correct. So then that means that V1 is. Um, 352 and V2 is 212. 352 and V2 is 212. Okay. Now, erase all of this. So I delta. So I delta is. Um, 352 divided by 160, which is equal to 2.2 amps. So this is 2.2. Okay, now that we know that, we can start to compute power. So um, let's first start with the, this power, what, what is dissipating? We don't know whether it's absorbing energy or whether it's um, giving it or it's developing energy. So um, we have to figure that out, and the math should yield the answer. So, um, power is voltage times current. So voltage is just 84 times I delta, which is 2.2. So that's the voltage. What's the current? The current is going to be V2, which is 352 minus um, I delta, which is 84 times 2.2 over 8. See that? This is that all this is is power is equal to voltage. This is a voltage term, right? Times current. And this is just right here, V, this is V, and this is R. So V over R is I. So basically what I did was I did P is equal to V times I. So when you do that math, you should come up with and let me just double check because I don't want to make typos. So I got 352 minus 84 times 2.2. Divide that by 8 times that by 84 times 2.2. Holy smokes. Let me double check that. All right. So how did I do this before? This should be 3.4. So that should be 352 minus 84 times 2.2. 352 minus 84 times 2.2 divided by 8. Hmm. Oh. That's because this should be V2, and I pulled the value from V1. Ah, typos. 2.2. Now let's try that again. So 212 minus 84 times 2.2. Divide that by 8. Okay, now I get 3.4. So this, 212 minus 84 times 2.2 is voltage. And then divided by the resistance of 8 gives me the current going into that dependent voltage source. And that should be 3.4 amps. So times 84 times 2.2. This here is the voltage. So it's a dependent voltage source. It depends on the value of I delta, which is 
So that gives me, come on, people. Ah, typos galore. Okay, more like it. So after I was all done with my typos, I found out that the power developed by that de dependent voltage source is so P of 84I delta is um, 628.32 watts. Okay, so it is absorbing power, it's not developing any power. So now resistors always absorb power, independent voltage source. So what is that doing? Or independent current source, excuse me. So P of 25 amps is going to be P times V, right? V times I. So P is equal to VI. So I is easy. That's just 25. V is 2, 3, 15. Actually, the I is going into the node, so it's negative 25. And the V is the 352. And that is going to give you negative, negative 8,800 watts. When the sign is negative, it means that the source is developing power. So this is delivering power to the circuit. So now we got to go through and find the rest of them and prove that we got the right answer. Um, so let's do power absorbed by 40. Um, so that's going to be P is equal to P40 is equal to V squared over R. And V1 is 352. 352 squared over 40, and that is going to give me P of 40 ohms is going to be 309.7.6. Now the next one I want to find is the 160, so the power of the 160 dissipated by the 160 ohm resistor should be V1 squared over R. And that's going to be 352 squares over 160. That will give me 774. So P160 is equal to 774.4. Now, the 10 ohm resistor. So P10 is equal to... Whatever current this is, divided by that. Oh, yeah, so V, so I'm going to do VI. P is equal to VI. Or I squared R, excuse me. I squared R. And I is V1. V1 minus V2 over 10 squared. And then R is just 10. So V1 is 352 minus V2, which is 212 over 10, square that, and do that, and that should give you 1960, so P10 is 1960 watts, and now we need the 20, power of the 20 ohm resistor, so for P of 20, we'll do V2 squares over R, V2 is 212, 212 squared over 20, and do that, you should come up with P20 is equal to 2247.2. Well, put this here. So P20 is 2247.2. That's P20. Now P8, P8, power absorbed by the 8 ohm resistor is going to be V2, we're going to do um, I squared R, so P is equal to I squared R, I is V2 minus 84 I delta, I, that's I over 8, square that, that's the current through that 8 ohm resistor, and then R is 8. So, and this works out to be 212 minus 84 times 2.2 amps over 8, square all of that times 8, 
That will give you 92.48. So P of 8 equal to 92.48. Now, you add up all the positive terms, so you go, you go um, 6.38.32 plus 3097.6 plus 774.4 plus plus 1960 plus 2247.2 plus 92.48 and it comes up to 8800 therefore um, power delivered equals power absorbed uh, power delivered is equal to power absorbed and that's your proof all right I hope this helps if it does please share it with your classmates and um, like the Facebook thanks